good morning students today we are going to take up the topic soil erosion and we are going to focus on the causes of soil erosion its prevention and conservation methods so these are the three topics on which we are going to focus on so let us begin now soil erosion refers to the removal of the soil by the forces of nature like wind and water more rapidly than the various soil forming process can replace it now what do you exactly mean by this now it means that the soil forming process is a very slow one but the removal of the soil can be done very quickly generally there is a balance between soil forming process and erosional process however the balance can be disturbed by both natural and human factors so let us first take the natural factors which lead to soil erosion water and wind are the most important natural factors which lead to soil erosion water erosion can cause the following types of erosion so let us understand each of these different types of soil erosion caused by water separately now when the top layer of the soil is removed over a large area by running water it is called sheet erosion water we all know is a very powerful agent of soil erosion so when there is no vegetation it can simply drag the top soil away and can cause a very detrimental impact on this soil the unprotected land becomes highly susceptible to sheet erosion This is the second stage of sheet erosion and it is known as rill erosion. Here if erosion continues to go unchecked for a sufficient time then small finger shaped grooves begin to take formation. Now these can be initially a few centimeters in depth but over a period of time these fine rills increase in number and also become deeper and wider and resemble that of twigs and branches of a tree trunk this is known as rill erosion Now this is the third stage of sheet erosion and it is known as gully erosion Now with further erosion of the soil the rills become deeper and also enlarged Here you can see how the finger like shaped 
high hardly a few centimeters deep have now become very wide they become enlarged and ultimately turn into gullies the main cause of gully erosion is the removal of vegetation particularly trees with their widespread binding roots have now been removed so this kind of an impact occurs in a gully erosion gullies can cut up agricultural land and the entire area may be turned into a bad land topography gully erosion is also responsible for the formation of ravines stream bank erosion it occurs when the continuous flow of water erodes the banks of streams and rivers this type of erosion is very prevalent in the flood plains of the ganga yamuna and other rivers as a result the stream bank erosion lead to large scale erosion of agricultural lands in the state of uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh and have transformed several areas into ravines this type of erosion that is shore erosion is widespread along the coastal areas especially in the eastern coast where floods and storms are very common shore erosion can be checked by deepening the river beds which will prevent the floods deepening of river beds means that dredging has to be done that is the river bed needs to be cleared of all the silt and sand which it has been bringing since a long period of time now during heavy rains water percolates into the soil until it is unable to penetrate further by the underlying impervious rocks this normally happens in steep hilly areas where the impervious rocks are found underneath the softer soil now the heavy moisture laden soil often comes down bodily here you can see how the entire area or the soil of this entire area has simply slipped down leading to landslides and all these houses over here you can see that they have all been buried under the weight of the mud and the silt and the muck which has been brought down by the landslide the wind is a very powerful agent of erosion in arid and semi arid lands with little water wind can lift the valuable topsoil from one area and deposit it in an another area due to wind erosion most of the world's deserts are expanding so here we can see how the wind is carrying the sand to further expanding the desert apart from natural forces 
humans are also responsible in leading to soil erosion faulty methods of agriculture deforestation overgrazing have all been responsible for bringing about soil erosion deforestation occurs mainly because of increasing population modernization and industrialization and because of all this there is a reckless cutting down of trees and all this leads to the areas become becoming exposed and are mostly liable to be having severe soil erosion roots of trees and plants help in binding the soil and regulate the flow of water the saving soil from erosion but when they are cut down the entire area is exposed to erosion and in no time this entire area will be devastated by the erosion which is normally carried on by wind and water overgrazing is also a very harmful method mainly because the animals not only consume the grasses but they also pull the roots of the grasses thus not allowing the grasses to grow and replenish and this exposes the soil because the cover of the grasses have been removed and ultimately leading to soil erosion besides this faulty methods of agriculture like shifting agriculture plowing the fields along the slope makes the area exposed to soil erosion soil erosion due to shifting agriculture is one of the major problems in the northeastern states of india now how are we to save the soil from getting eroded so it is very important to conserve the soil and what do we actually mean by soil conservation it refers to all the measures which are to be taken in order to protect the soil from erosion and exhaustion erosion we already know exhaustion is the removal of the fertility or reduction of the fertility of the soil so soil erosion conservation becomes a very important task for us now why do we need to have soil conservation We all know that soil is a major resource because it sustains agriculture. Soil conservation is required to meet the present and future needs of the population especially in terms of food, fiber and shelter. Soil conservation is very much required to avert food crisis because it is the only source from where we can get our food. Soil acts as a filter, cleans the air and water and exchanges gases with the atmosphere, thus influencing global warming. Soil also receives organic waste, recycles the nutrients and holds and breaks down all different types of toxic waste. Protective soil alone ensures progress in agriculture, industrial development, economic betterment and a higher standard of living. So it is very important to conserve the soil.
Now soil conservation can be done with the help of reforestation and afforestation. Afforestation is the establishment of forest or a stand of trees in an area where there was no forest. Whereas the process of planting trees in areas where the trees have been removed or have been destroyed by fire, disease, etc. is reforestation. The best way to conserve soil is to increase the area under forest. Indiscriminate felling of trees should be stopped and effort should be made to plant new and better trees for the future generation. Because the roots of trees and plants anchor and hold the soil together, so it cannot be easily removed by running water. Trees, plants, shrubs and grasses reduce the speed of flowing water and is also a great absorber of water. Trees reduce the force of strong winds and prevent the blowing away of the soil because wherever there are trees, there will be moisture and the moisture saturates the soil. So strong winds will not be able to blow away the soil particles. Restricted grazing of animals must be ensured to replenish the pastures and avoid soil erosion. Construction of dams can also check the speed of water and save soil from erosion. So I hope you all must have understood how important soil is and why there is so much of emphasis laid to save the soil from getting eroded. So that is what we have enough time for today. Until next, thank you.